Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Tax Calculation 2024 Updates. My name is Kai Liang, and、uh, I will be your moderator and one of the presenters today. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Maple Nine, Principal Engineering Manager, Kai Liang, Senior Program Manager, Ekaterina Podkosi, Senior Program Manager. Katerina, over to you to get us started. Thank you for the introduction, Kai, and hello everyone, and、uh, thank you for joining us today.、Uh, let's move to our agenda. Today's sessions,、uh, we picked some major functionalities that our team released in recent updates, and we would like to share with you. They involve、uh, additional currency exchange rate type for sales tax calculation. Project transaction integration with uh, uh, tax calculation, connection to an external tax solution provided via Universal Tax Rate API, and last but not least, topic is uh, uh, we will share the important update、uh, concerning tax calculation unification. So let's begin from the first topic on our agenda. It's the exchange rate type for sales tax. And first of all, I would like to mention that it was one of the top. Rated ideas on the idea portal in tax area, and I like to thank for、uh, submitting ideas、uh, on how to improve our product and、uh, for voting for the, the ideas. And、uh, this really help helps us、uh, to understand and properly evaluate the demand、uh, for new features and to build our roadmap accordingly. So the exchange rate、uh, that is used for tax calculation and can differ from、uh, the exchange rate. That is used for company accounting functions. With this feature, you can select the exchange rate that is used to calculate tax to correctly report your tax returns. It also supports、uh, direct recalculation from the transaction currency to tax currency, and uh, supports uh, uh, adjusting amounts、uh, in tax currency.、Uh, so, some uh, prerequisites, uh, some important prerequisites to mention for this feature. This functionality is available as of version 35. And it's available only for business processes that are enabled for tax calculation and tax calculation parameters. And、uh, also, it uh, depends uh, on the global feature that uh, was uh, re- released uh, uh, in the past,、uh, and the name is、uh, Date of、uh, Date Register、uh, functionality. So, with that, let's switch to the short demo that we recorded to illustrate、uh, this functionality. After enabling the Enable Exchange Rate Type for Sales Tax feature in the Feature Management Workspace, you will be able to switch on the Enable Exchange Rate Types for Sales Tax parameter in the General Ledger parameters. You will be prompted that you are changing the tax calculation method for operations in foreign currency. Tax amounts will be converted directly from the transaction currency to the tax currency using the exchange rates set for the Exchange Rate Types for Sales Tax. And also, you will receive a message that you'll need to recalculate taxes for the unposted documents. After that, you will be able to select exchange rate type for tax reporting purposes. That is different from the one that is selected in the ledger parameters of the legal entity. You will need to set up sales tax receivable and sales tax payable difference and difference offset accounts in the ledger posting groups for sales tax codes. Once completed the setup of the functionality, you can post invoices that use foreign currency. And adjust the exchange rate and tax amounts on the sales tax transactions page. On the sales tax transactions page of the document that's being processed, you can review the exchange rates, amount origin, and tax amounts in the accounting currency, reporting currency, and tax currency. These amounts are shown for both exchange rate types: the one that's set on the ledger page and the one that's set on the general ledger parameters page. You can update the exchange rate based on the rate provided in the incoming document. Subsequently, the tax amounts in the tax currency will be recalculated accordingly. When a document is posted, you can view any differences in sales tax amount that are caused by the difference between the tax currency exchange rate and the accounting currency exchange rate for your organization. An additional tax transaction is created to reflect the amounts for tax reporting purposes in the tax currency. The amounts in the tax currency will be reported in your VAT declaration. That concludes the Enable Exchange Rate Type for Sales Tax feature demo. Thank you for watching.、Mm-hmm. So, next、uh, topic is integration with、uh, 
project transactions, and let me start with uh, tax calculation update. So as you know, we extend tax calculation integration with more and more transaction types in finance and operations applications. And starting from the 10.0.38 release, uh, this uh, integration is available for project management and accounting transactions. Uh, you can enable this functionality like similar to other previously integrated uh, types. You just need to pick uh, projects uh, in the business processes in the tax calculation parameters, and the uh, tax will be calculated according uh, to the tax feature configuration for uh, all the available uh, project transactions. They involve uh, project invoice proposals, different uh, journal types like our expense uh, item and fee, project quotations, and of course, project operation integration journal. And similar to other transaction types, you can always override sales tax group that uh, are determined uh, according to your applicability rules in your tax feature uh, using the override sales tax functionality. So last topic on my part, uh, uh, but not the least, is related uh, to enhancements uh, in uh, India GST, uh, TDS and TCS taxes for project accounting transactions that team uh, released uh, in uh, the uh, 10, uh, 30, uh, uh, sorry, 10 0.35 for version update. So when the feature is enabled, Indian indirect and direct taxes are available in project integration journal. This feature provides an option that lets users to review transactions and adjust tax attributes and accounting attributes uh, as needed uh, in all uh, types of uh, uh, integration journals. Default tax uh, uh, information and TDS, uh, TCS groups are included uh, in uh, all types of journals like in our fee, item and expense journal and uh, in the 365 finance. You can uh, uh, edit the default tax attributes uh, in integration journals and the uh, project invoice proposals. Uh, so GST uh, calculation is included uh, on the tax document for expense integration journals and TDS uh, TCS calculations is also included uh, in withholding tax in expense integration journals. So with that said, let me give the floor to Kai uh, to talk about next topic uh, on connection to external tax providers. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. So uh, next. Let me introduce the Universal Tax Rate API feature. So this feature is developed in response to a highly voted idea in our idea portal to address the issue where for countries like USA and for enterprise customers operating in many different tax jurisdictions, a large variety of tax rates and uh, tax applicability rules are to be configured and maintained. In these cases, external solution providers can simplify uh, the complexity and reduce your maintenance overhead. Hence, we worked closely with our ISVs like Vertex and uh, Avalara in the past year to build and uh, make our tax calculation framework available to, to external ISVs via a set of standard APIs defined by Microsoft. This framework ensures stable and uh, secure access to the external tax solutions by its nature because it shares the, the same tax data model and the payload in transactions. A seamless integration with Dynamics 365 applications is inherited from our tax calculation service. As you may see in the diagram here, under this framework, Microsoft team will be focusing more on extending tax calculation to further first-party applications to support further country localizations and to ensure a seamless upgrade for your system, while our ISVs will be focusing more on the configuration and the timely updates of tax rates, tax applicability rules, and other statutory requirements for numerous tax jurisdictions. Uh, starting 10.039, you can enable the feature, enable external tax solution providers for tax calculation service in feature management to start a preview of the Universal Tax Rate API. The current supported country is the United States. And the same as tax calculation service, 
uh, you can further control the relevant functionalities by legal entity and uh, by business process. Of course, thanks to the tax calculation unification, the tier two environment is, is no longer a precondition for this feature as well. Yeah. We'll see it in the combined demo shortly. First, we'll see a few highlights for the functions that have been made available via the Universal Tax Rate API. The first one, encrypted connection. The Universal Tax Rate API supports an encrypted connection via Azure Key Vault. This connection helps ensure the security and the privacy of data that are transmitted to your tax solution provider. Yeah. The second is uh, address validation. So this functionality helps you validate and update addresses that are maintained or to be maintained in your global address book for an accurate tax calculation and tax determination. A third, accrual of use tax. So in the United States, the buyer is liable to use tax for purchases of taxable items and services which were not fully taxed by the seller. This function helps you as a buyer to assess the potential use tax liability on you when you receive your vendor invoice. So it Use tax transactions will be populated if the sales tax amount on the invoice is lower than the tax amount assessed in this procedure. Yeah. Okay. And uh, finally, the uh, overcharge tolerance. In addition to the use tax scenario, if the sales tax amount on the vendor invoice is higher than the tax amount assessed by your tax solution provider uh, with this functionality, you, you can choose to accept only those invoices on which the overcharged sales tax is still below the tolerance I use that. So we'll see more details in the demo. Uh, let me first hand over to Maple for the introduction of tax calculation unification. Thank you, Kai. So for uh, here, let me introduce the tax calculation unification. And in the left side, this is a previous or what you are say you are using now, because for this unification we are released in ten point zero thirty nine, and in the left side this is the current architecture. So uh, when you are enabling the test calculation service, so the transaction you click the sales test button in the transaction in finance, it will trigger an API call to the test calculation service. Then we will the service will fetch the test configuration and the test features from the global repo. And then uh, with these configurations and setups, it will uh, do the calculation based on some of the setup. So if it, you choose to do the calculation by the test calculation itself, then the service will calculate the result and the return. If you are uh, determined to using the third party test rate API, then the test calculation will call the third-party test rate API to uh, calculate test result, then return back to the transaction to further process showing the sales test tax or to post the sales tax. And here in the left uh, top corner, you will see the regulatory configuration service. So this is where you do the uh, test configuration or maintain the test setups and the content is saved in the global repo. And in the right side, that way is the architecture after the unification. After the unification, you will see the major change here are two points. One is the test calculation is merged into the finance system. And second is the regulatory configuration service is also merged back to the finance as part of the globalization studio workspace. And also there are one more change here is the global repo. We are, that is the place where we saved the configuration earlier. And now we using the Dataverse repo to save the configurations. And let me also introduce the flow here is when you click the sales test button in the transaction, it will still trigger the test calculation. Then uh, it will do the test calculation based on your setups, either by the engine itself or either call the third-party APIs and then uh, return back the 
result than for uh, viewing the sales text or posting the sales text. So this is the major the workflow. And uh, for the configuration maintenance, you will go to the globalization studio workspace to maintain the configurations. Now let's see more uh, what is the impact on you for this unification. So in overall, you can consider all the features or functionalities that you adopt today in, in the test calculation service there will be no change. All the points are still supported. And even all the setups, configurations, and the whole you operation, your experience, everything, you no change. You will consider that it will be just for you as a user. It's just a seamless stuff. That things only happens that we make Microsoft make this change, make the movement from the test calculation service to finance test calculation. We did it underneath for you. And now let me introduce more details on what is changed and what is not changed. For what is changed here, first is the test calculation service is merged into Dynamics 365 Finance in 10.0.39. Second, the test feature setup is moved from regulatory, regulatory configuration service to globalization studio workspace in finance. Third is the official test configuration storage is moved from global repo to database. The fourth one is a tier two is no longer the street precondition to use the test calculation service. And also this will be a big benefit for you as after this unification, you will not need to require a tier two environment to for your validation or for your testing purpose. You can use in the tier one environment afterward. So this is why we will highly encourage you to upgrade your environment to after the 10.0.39 versions. And then what is not changed here is all the test calculation behaviors in finance that are not changed. The test calculation functionality are not changed and the test feature, the test configurations are not changed. And then what we you need to do is uptake so the answer is very simple. No, nothing you need to update or uptake. Just that seamless change here for you. Just use it. Now let's give you some demo about the universal test rate API and also the unification. I'll demonstrate uh, implement and the configuration for connecting an external text solution provider with the universal text rate API feature. Starting 10.039. We are now able to do this directly in FNO system. We try the universal text rate API feature. You should first enable the feature in the feature management. Make sure you have enabled the dependent text calculation service feature as well. Uh, the next thing is to engage and uh, choose one ISV as your text solution provider. The available ISV list can be found uh, in our online documentation on Microsoft Learn Portal. In general, the ISV shall provide you with their service credentials and uh, following files. For the credentials, you can contact Microsoft support and let them bind you with our tax calculation team. We will guide you through the security configuration for the key vault setup in Azure Platform and the client secret setup in FNO. For the files, you should get one XML and one or two JSON files. The XML is an ISV defined text configuration based on the text data model we released for the Universal Tax Rate API. And the JSON files are ISV defined text features based on their text configuration, which shall be ported to text calculation. Now let's import the files. Go to Globalization Studio, find Microsoft repository. Open the global repository. and import 
the tax calculation data model for ISV integration. Now go back. In electronic reporting tax configuration, find the imported tax data model. Click load from XML file. Find the XML, which is shared to you by your tax solution provider. Import it. Go back and uh, click tax calculation tile. Click import from JSON. Find and import the ISV tax feature. Your tax solution provider might provide you with a second JSON, which is an example for you to create the customer level tax feature. Import it as well. Now create a new version of the customer level feature. Click edit. You can Select the dependent tax feature and uh, related environment here. Your tax solution provider will also guide you with as uh, ISV specific configurations and functions in this feature version. But most importantly, you should in, uh, select the client ID and the client secret here. Click test connection. Okay, you are now connected to the external text solution. Go back and complete the feature version. Now we can set up the tax calculation parameters in the required legal entity. In tax, tax calculation parameters, enable tax solution provider. Click the feature version which we just completed. Like tax calculation service, new tax codes that are defined in the tax feature will be imported to your legal entity. Select settlement period and the ledger posting group for the tax codes. Select the business processes that shall use the external tax solution. Enable address validation and select USA in the supported countries regions. You can switch on the override address option to accept the address correction from your external tax solution provider during address validation. For the United States, and when you have selected purchase in the business process, you will further switch on the accrual use tax option to let your tax solution provider evaluate and populate the use tax transaction on the vendor invoice when applicable. Finally, you can further define the tolerance in percentage and the fixed amount for the maximum sales tax that can be overcharged by your vendor. Choose whether it should be a warning or an error message when it's over tolerance. Okay, we are done with the setting. Let's proceed to see the address validation functionality. There are multiple places where you can do the address validation, such as in the global address book as well as the master data. Let's take the vendor master as an example. A validate button is now available in the address tab. Select one existing address or add a new address. Click validate to trigger the request. Your tax solution provider will return the matching records to correct your input. 
such as the address format as well as additional address information to accelerate sure and accurate tax calculation when using this address ship from address. Pick the right address and uh, let it override our input. Okay. Now let's scroll down to check the accrue use tax functionality. A new field, accrue sales tax type, is introduced to the invoice and the delivery tab in the vendor master. You can change the default behavior in this field at the vendor level. The default option is the legacy behavior. Change it to accrue use tax so that your tax solution provider will populate the use tax transaction for you when your vendor undercharges you sales tax. Change it to advanced to further control the system behavior when your vendor overcharges you sales tax on the invoice. You can define the vendor-specific tolerance fields here as well. Let's first create a vendor invoice with default behavior. You will notice that the accrual sales tax type field is also available on the invoice header. Let me change the unit price to 1000 for a simple 5% sales tax calculation. So now by default, your tax solution provider shall determine the tax rate by the underlying delivery information and calculate the tax result, $50 for this invoice. This is the legacy behavior. Now, assuming the total sales tax printed on the vendor invoice is $25, select accrue sales tax and input 25 in the vendor charged sales tax field. Click sales tax, a use tax transaction at the $25 will be populated in addition to the vendor charged sales tax transaction. Finally, let's change the type to advanced. With this option for the tax undercharge scenario, it will populate the use tax transaction as well, similar to the use tax option. But for the overcharge case, let's say your vendor charges you $51 for sales tax, which means they overcharged you $1 for sales tax on this invoice. The system will check the overcharge tolerance. Here, since we kept both tolerance fields as zero, so the $1 already exceeds our tolerance. An error message will pop out to stop the invoice posting process. Okay, I think that is all for the demo. And uh, uh, you are encouraged to already try these new functionalities in 10.039. And uh, uh, let me hand over to Maple for the uh, an overview of tax calculation update. Okay, thank you. So uh, here with uh, all the stuff, most of the stuff that the key features we shipped in the past uh, one year or in the uh, 2023 with one and with two. So we categorize the most of features in four categories. First is the test calculation service. The it will integration with the uh, in, so for test calculation will integrate with many uh, transactions. One is the invoice register, invoice pull, invoice approval, and the second is the project uh, transactions and the project operation journals. For these that we supported the project operations through the project operation journal. And the third is about the integration with prepayment handling form. So also as uh, Kate mentioned, as Katrina mentioned in the previous demo and slides, uh, we introduced the test specific exchange rate. And uh, also now that test calculation service merged to finance and operations as part of globalization studio workspace. 
Second category is the simplified integration. So for these, uh, we provided test calculation, posting, address, validation APIs, and these APIs support the purchase, sales, free test invoice, journal, and transfer order and the inventories. And for also we shared that the it supports the US use tax accrual scenarios, and also it supports the uh, project transaction as well. So for the third category is extended tax scenarios. So under these, the, we uh, shipped the withholding tax estimation on vendor invoice and uh, also the test transaction data archival, which can relieve the big database for the tax transaction table. And also shipped the project integration journal with the India GST and withholding tax. So for Latin countries, we also supported the test scenarios there. And last but not least is the regulatory compliance side. In the past year, Brazil have some of the regulatory changes in the tax area. So we have shipped the change to meet the compliance requirements in this area. Now let's open for the Q&A session and answer the questions you raised. Uh, the first one is, uh, is the integration to Avalara Vertex part part of the uh, MS license? Can you comment on what extra cost comes with integration in TCS to Avalara Vertex transaction based? Oh uh, yeah. So basically you don't, we don't require, we don't add any uh, additional requirement on the dynamic uh, license for this feature. As you uh, to for a security connection perspective, uh, we pretty much need to uh, configure the Azure platform and uh, leverage the Azure key vault to to store the credentials provided by either Avalara or or Vertex to you, and uh, it might have a minor cost. It's like a uh, one million operations per for for three dollars, and uh, yeah, you. Definitely need the uh, need to subscribe the the tax service of Avalara and uh, Vertex, and that is uh, the extra cost which you need to contact uh, contact them for, for details. Yeah. And the uh, next question: When tax exchange rate will be posted, and do currency exchange rate gain loss account? would automatically be debited credit, I think, uh, Katarina, to advance. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so in general, yes, the sales tax difference will be posted on the accounts uh, that are from uh, uh, tax uh, code posting uh, group. And I pasted uh, documentation now with uh, it contains some example of uh, how these uh, amounts are calculated and uh, posted both on tax transaction and uh, in bulk. Next, will the tax API only work for US-based uh, companies? Well, in 10039, we we have the scope of USA. But in general, we did not restrict the countries in for, for the API, which means you basically can enable this uh, external tax solution, this feature for all tax calculation service countries. And uh, yeah, uh, it relies on the ISV's roadmap and their supported countries to to see if they can like, support uh, the calculation for those countries. Yeah. And uh, next, is global taxing deprecated or will it be deprecated soon? I think, well, yeah. maybe for this, will you take this? Sure, I can answer that. And uh, so this is uh, it is on our roadmap to moving moving on the global uh, the the test engine to move the to test calculation service. But for now, that uh, we will share uh, when we have the actual plan on that. But uh, uh, please expect this will take some time. And when we uh, we uh, make it, we will having some another. Uh, tech talk session to share with you all these uh, updates. And for now that uh, we currently 
we just uh, moving the test casualty service into the finance. And uh, also I can answer the next question, when will ZT be replaced? I think this just, uh, re so it's on our roadmap. Uh, to, uh, please expect, uh, it may take some time. And uh, the next question, will support multiple VAT registration numbers and uh, enable exchange rate types for sales tax be now available for companies that are using external tax solution providers. Uh, I would say these are the, the feature mentioned are mainly developed and targeted for the uh, EU region and uh, uh, Europe countries. So uh, from the, the framework and the, uh, the design perspective, we, uh, these features will also be eventually inherited to made available for the API for external solution providers. So uh, when we, for instance, later you heard or uh, you, we announced that the APIs are like also available in EU countries, then these functionalities are definitely uh, available for con companies that are using external solution providers. Next, since the tax calculation is moved from RCS to D365 FO, uh, is the possibility to use tax calculation for multi-tenants available? Uh, this is more like a technical question. Uh, Maple, if, I, I don't know if you or me can take sure. as well. Uh, Pro ten. Uh, so actually, that uh, when we are uh, moved to the into FMO, so that means uh, we you can only uh, trigger the test calculation inside the FMO inside the same environment. So let's just uh, consider like you are triggering the embedded standard test calculation engine. So in, in the same way. So you are not able to, for other environment, you cannot just having a cross call the test calculation from one environment to another environment. So this is not possible. So you can trigger the environment within this finance operation environment. Yeah. Okay. So uh, and next, will there be any update additions to tax calculation, tax applicability rules within the tax service? For example, there's a parameter for line amounts not all the amount. This is a, a I, I think these are the uh, re requirements we re would receive from time to time. And uh, frankly speaking, these are more, we are more than appreciated to like learn these requirements. You can make, uh, we will definitely take this uh, requirement into consideration and to make it uh, into our uh, like standard tax data model for tax calculation. In general, we ima we are imagined that uh, tax calculation shall be done uh, by the same uh, piece of the payload, which is extracted from different transactions. So uh, additional uh, fields, which build the tax data model is, will be evaluated we, and we are continuously uh, adding more fields and upgrade our uh, text data model to higher versions. And uh, yes, please, uh, you, you can you can forward the, these requirements either from the idea portal or like uh, directly to us and uh, we will definitely evaluate these requirements. So next, how can we uh, set up access taxes? We have a customer buying alcohol beverage, uh, and uh, there are a lot of bargaining you size linked to that. And uh, well, okay, an idea. So uh, excess taxes are also brought to us from time to time, and I would again suggest that you need to you you can uh, post your request and the requirements in our idea portal under the. Uh, tax page and uh, we actually monitor these ideas in our idea portals um, proactively and uh, we'll 
address additional tax types. These are also like interesting topics to tax calculation. So far, tax calculations are designed for a better fit for VAT, for sales tax, use tax deeds, uh, indirect taxes. And for excess taxes, we'll uh, definitely uh, see it also like one of the piece, which is uh, a, a, a topic to be covered by tax calculation yeah, in the future. Yeah, yes, I ju just, just yeah. wanted to say that uh, actually uh, there is already some uh, idea on our idea portal to calculate uh, some taxes on uh, ingredient, ingredients of products, right? And uh, we are uh, this under review as of now. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. The next question, within the tax service, we can currently manage columns to add additional criteria for calculating item VAT group and uh, VAT groups. Will there be any new columns added? So maybe I can answer that. Okay. So uh, the answer also can be yes. So definitely, uh, this will depend on the business requirement and uh, the customer needs. So. Uh, if you see as some additional columns that may be not supported now and still need to, to be added, you can raise the request in the idea portal. So the team, we will charge it based on the uh, votes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, uh, April. So yeah, basically these columns are, frankly speaking, uh, in, in the X configuration uh, with some advanced configuration. I even be able to introduce new applicability rule tables, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, uh, will it also work with invoice register and the invoice approval? Well, yeah. If you mean the uh, universal tax rate API, then uh, yes, invoice register and the invoice approval are also integrated. So again, uh, because uh, we share the same framework, with the current TCS, the, the tax calculation service. So the basically all transactions that have been integrated with tax calculation service is by its nature uh, inheriting this payload and it it, it can it is exposed to tax uh, external tax ISVs for the for the API connection for the connection with external tax solution. So yeah. If it is also supported. Okay. So next, is there a time frame for Universal Tax Rate API feature to be supported in uh, EU countries? Well, because uh, these uh, roadmaps are still under NDA, which we cannot disclose in this this session. But in general, uh, EU countries are on our roadmap, and uh, I don't know if uh, Katarina, if you can share more details. Uh, your thoughts on these questions? Oh no, you covered it well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So next, how to set up an uh, excise duty with VAT in country for India? Is it possible to map through GTE? So it should be possible. Yeah. Then yeah. yeah, I think uh, we have the documentation on how to extend the configuration. So excise duty with VAT in country for India is also supported, right? So, uh, frankly speaking, uh, in India, the indirect tax it should be, well, most uh, it, the, the general rules are applied to the industry, right? For VAT, it's only like for the, uh, the petrol goods or items. Anyway, you can like uh, forward your request to us and uh, we'll definitely uh, evaluate the request and uh, align with you. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, I have a customer with EU legal entities would love to have the sales tax currency exchange rate feature. Do you need to move to ASIS? They currently use standard VAT setup within D365. Yes, sure. sure. So, so in the, in the, in general, uh, uh, this uh, customer will need to use tax uh, calculation functionality. However, it's uh, not uh, uh, necessary in RCS and actually starting from uh, update uh, of uh, uh, 39, 
it uh, uh, the RCS was merged back to uh, finance and uh, operation as a globalization studio workspace. And uh, uh, there was a tech talk on this matter and it should be available soon. And uh, so in general, you will need to use tax calculation feature and uh, not necessarily in RCS, but in FNO. But uh, it, it won't be uh, available, I mean, this uh, uh, feature, the sales tax conversion feature for core tax, for standard VAT setup. So only for those uh, uh, processes that are attached to tax calculation. So basically additional uh, tax setup need to be done in the globalization studio, right, for the sales tax currency feature. Uh, what are the benefits to using an external tax service with the universal tax rate API versus an existing SV solution that doesn't use the API? Okay, right. So basically, the universal tax rate API simplify the integration of the external SV solution, which means it actually reduces the potential issues you would meet when you up upgrading your, your system to newer version for new functionalities, for new integrations, and for additional country localizations. So this can be the uh, likely uh, framework. So later you'll see uh, the ISV solution is also moving in this direction. Okay, does this require Dataverse license? I think this is uh, regarding the uh, tax calculation merge or the RCS merge question. So basically, uh, we don't we don't anticipate additional uh, license in the uh, merge activity. Of course, for the universal tax rate API, if you select an, an uh, external ISV and using their ISV solution, then uh, the ISV, you, you may need the license of that ISV to, to use their solution. But uh, in general, from uh, Dynamics 365, we don't expect additional license to be included. I would say in addition for the security connection of Azure Key Vault, there are additional like a minor cost on the uh, usage of Azure Key Vault connection. It's like a three dollars for one million operations, something like that. And it's a like a security guidance we uh, which we uh, must follow at this moment. Yeah. Does the does this tax rate API currently support commerce for? tax calculation on post or in a call center setup. So this API, I would say commerce is on the roadmap of our tax calculation integration. So uh, at this moment, uh, API is not supporting uh, commerce, but uh, we are like uh, evaluating and uh, it is on our roadmap. Who can get the files from? and uh, where can I download them? For the files mentioned in the demo, I, I mean, uh, I think you mean the tax data model from the ISVs. So uh, when you upgrade to 10039, you shall find the mentioned uh, feature in the feature management, the enable external tax solution provider for tax calculation service, that feature. And you click on the learn more link on that feature to jump to the Microsoft LEM portal and uh, find the uh, external ISV link. One is Vertex, the other one is Ablara. The uh, landing page is being constructed. It will be updated to, to the link shortly. And then you shall be able to find the guidance from both ISVs to earn their contact team and uh, how to get the files and the, and their service credentials. You always need an external tax solution provider. What happens if the customer has a tax number in several countries, but no tax solution provider? Can this also be set? Yes. So actually, 
uh, you don't always need an external tax solution provider. As uh, we have launched the tax calculation service for uh, for two years, so uh, we understand for Europe uh, VAT region, you have pretty much already enabled the tax calculation for your legal entities in Europe. So uh, you can continue to do that with the same functionality in tax calculation. And right now, because the API is mostly tested and ready for the United States, you can, uh, for instance, only enable the relevant functionality to connect an external tax solution provider for your U.S. legal entity. And for the rest legal entities in, in, in other countries, you can still remain in the in the tax calculation uh, functionalities and you maintain those configurations and the feature versions yourself. Don't use the external tax solution provider. It's it's all supported. Yeah. So uh, Thank you. then next question is QST, PST, HST able to be posted to separate GL accounts for Canada. So right now, while we are talking about the functionality in tax calculation, so right for um, tax calculation, uh, I think can, um, Canada is already supported by the tax calculation service. But we do have um, already collected feedback that there are further uh, for the tax types in uh, Canada, which is like uh, more than uh, sales tax and uh, just a uh, uh, harmonized uh, sales tax HST. And I believe we this is also like on our roadmap to further and uh, uh, support Canadian tax in a, a more fully functional uh, way. Uh, then next, what should be the right pattern to extend tax calculation service applicability rules to the financial dimensions? I don't know if uh, we can, uh, Katarina or Maple, if you can answer the question. So uh, to extend the tax calculation service application rule to financial dimension, for this, that uh, 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 I, I always split it into two points. One is if it's a, you are using the universal test rate API feature, then we already have the financial dimensions in the uh, API and also the um, ISVs will support it in this area. And uh, if you need to uh, specifically not using the uh, ISV solution, you only want to using our standard test calculation, then uh, you will need to do some extend the configuration and also adding some logic in X++ to, uh, for example, you may add, uh, you may have multiple financial dimension, then you need to add multiple fields in the configuration and also add, add some code in X++ side to uh, pass the value from the transactions to the configuration. Then you can use the configuration in the application rules. Okay. So I will put a link. Uh, I will put two links related to how to add the new field in the test integration and uh, add it in the configuration. So if you are referring to the second scenario, you can take a reference. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next one. Uh, we are implementing a tax ISV now in 10038 and running into some issues regarding posting use tax based on taxation rule. Would it be better practice to wait and implement with this API feature? So uh, we would say that uh, you pretty much can evaluate also the API approach, which has been like. Uh, now in the public preview in 10039 and uh, i believe in 10038 we are we have done the private preview in the previous release so uh, you can like try to approach us and uh, already have a early evaluate on the new api feature yeah next question 
can we utilize this expansion of tax functionality for the payroll solution and uh, replace with our own rates or as a provider. So uh, again, so like we have uh, shared in our uh, overview for the tax calculation update, our direction is to like, integrate more uh, first party applications. So for your requirement, we really appreciate that you uh, share your thoughts and comments uh, with us. And uh, we would definitely look into the uh, further application integration point for uh, tax calculation. This uh, is uh, matching our roadmap and uh, we will we'll continuously working on uh, integrating to further first party applications. Yeah. Okay, so uh, with that, I think we will conclude today's, uh, today's session. Okay, then thanks to our presenters and to you, our audience, for attending our Tech Talk today. I hope uh, you have a great rest of the day ahead. Thank you.